Wish, chapter 19. Wishbone had liverwurst and scrambled eggs for dinner every night that week. He learned to roll over and turn in circles and flip a dog biscuit off his nose and catch it. And he didn't sleep on the floor beside my bed anymore. He slept right in the bed with me. I didn't mind his liverwurst breath one bit. I loved his soft, warm fur and the feel of his heartbeat against my cheek when I hugged him. Every night after supper, when me and Gus and Bertha sat on the porch, Wishbone snored contentedly while I rubbed my bare feet over his warm back. Sometimes, he'd jump up and let out a bark at a noise down in the woods. A raccoon or a possum, or maybe even just the rustle of leaves in the wind. That is one happy dog, Butterbean, Gus would say. Then Bertha would urge Gus to tell us another story about his dog, Skeeter. How about that time he fell in the river when y'all were fishing and your brother jumped in after him and flipped the boat over, she said. Gus chuckled, but before he could say a word, Bertha said, Oh, I know. Tell Charlie how your sister used to dress Skeeter up in her Girl Scout uniform. I took Wishbone to the Odoms almost every day. I still, hadn't told, I still hadn't told Howard I was sorry for what I said about his up-down walk, so there was always a big old elephant in the room for me. But Howard, he never let on that anything had happened between us. Still, I felt mad at myself for not speaking up. I kept thinking about what Bertha had said about judging folks for how they fix their mistakes, and I knew I wasn't doing a very good job of fixing mine. Every time me and Wishbone showed up at the Odin's front door, one of them would say hey and wave us in, and I'd get caught up in the flurry of that family like a tornado spinning me off my feet. Me and Howard played parcheesy at the kitchen table with a fan whirring in the doorway, while Wishbone scurried around searching for dropped crackers or spilled juice. Cotton would stick his face right up against the fan and let out a Tarzan yell, his voice coming out all quivery and making us laugh. Burl and Lenny would come in and make tomato sandwiches, leaving greasy black fingerprints on everything they touched. It seemed like they were always working on some kind of engine. Car, motorcycle, lawnmower. Every once in a while, a swear word would drift through the screen door from out in the yard and Mrs. Odom would march out there and tell them to hush up talking like that. Dwight went to baseball camp at the YMCA and came home covered in red dirt and sweat. Most days, he and Cotton ended up in some kind of wrestling match, throwing sofa cushions at each other until Cotton ended up whining to Mrs. Odom. Some days it was so hot, me and Howard would lay on the porch with ice cubes on our foreheads and tell knock-knock jokes. One day, Mrs. Odom put a tarp in the bed of his, or excuse me, one day, Mr. Odom put a tarp in the bed of his pickup truck and filled it with water. We sat in there with our shorts and t-shirts on and ate frozen Kool-Aid in paper cups. I wish we could go to a real swimming pool, Howard said. When I get, when I go back to Raleigh, I said, I'm going to take swimming lessons like I did last summer. When are you going back to Raleigh? I shrugged. I don't know for sure. I'm just saying, when I do. Maybe if you stay in Colby, Daddy will drive us over to the lake one day, Howard said. We can take Wishbone. I bet he'd like to swim. Maybe. Let's go down to the creek, Howard said. I sighed. He'd been trying to get me to go back down to the creek behind his house for days. But I was nervous. What if Wishbone runs off again, I said. Hold on to the leash real good, Howard said. But really, Charlie, he don't want to run off. He just made a mistake last time. He tossed a saltine cracker on the floor for Wishbone. He came back, didn't he? So I finally said yes, and the three of us trudged down the path to the creek with ferns tickling our legs and wishbones sniffing at every little thing along the way.
But when we got there, a bad, heavy feeling settled over me. Instead of seeing the tiny silver minnows darting around the mossy rocks, I saw the look on Howard's face when I had said, "You wished you didn't have that, and you wished you didn't have that up-down walk." And even though he acted like he didn't care anymore, for me those words still hovered in the air between us like a storm cloud. I tossed a pebble into the creek and watched the water ripple and the minnows scatter. I'm sorry for what I said, Howard. When he looked a little puzzled, I added, "About you wishing you didn't have that up-down walk." Oh, he tossed a pebble into the creek too, and and Wishbone leaped in after it, sending up a spray of cold water. I, I know that was a mean thing to say, and I'm sorry. I said. I waited for Howard to say that's okay, but he didn't. I waited for him to say. Don't worry about it, but he didn't. I waited for him to say, "Oh heck, Charlie, I forgot all about that," but he didn't. In fact, he didn't say anything for the longest time, and then he shrugged and said, "I'm used to kids saying mean things about the way I walk." Ouch! Stab me in the heart, Howard. Toss me into the mean pile with all the other hateful kids in Colby. Squish me into the mud like the worm that I am. My eyes darted from tree to rock to creek to fern while I scrambled to figure out what to say next. And then I spied it: a blackbird feather nestled in the leaves and pine needles beside the creek. Look, I said, grabbing the feather and holding it up for Howard to see. He squinted at it, pushing his glasses farther up on his freckled nose. "Something to wish on," I said. "You stick it in the ground and make a wish." I held it out to him. "Here, you take it. Make a wish." He shook his head. "No.、Nah. Why not?" He took his glasses off and wiped drops of creek water off of them with the edge of his shirt. Then he put him back on and said, "Cause I know my wish ain't never coming true." Well, well now, that surprised me. Coming from Howard, who was always Mister Positive. How do you know? How do you know that? I asked. Well, I, I just do. But look at me! I said, "I've made the same wish every day since fourth grade, and it hasn't come true yet." I stroked the top of Wishbone's wet head, but if I make that wish enough times, I know it will someday. Then I hope it does," Howard said. I held the feather out to him again. "You sure?" He nodded. So I stuck the feather into the soft dirt beside the creek, closed my eyes, and made my wish. On the way home that day, the feeling that had been weighing me down so much since I'd said that mean thing to Howard felt a little bit lighter. I wasn't sure if I had fixed my mistake, but at least I had tried.